Why did you write a book about your relationship with Michael? I wanted everyone to know the Michael that I knew. I felt that um, the stories that have been in the press haven't been the Michael that I remember at all. They've made him into this other character that didn't exist. You know, Michael was a real person, a real man. He wasn't wacko jacko. And I think this book, once you read it, you'll see that that is true. And um, I think you'll love him even more once you read it. <laughs> Did you ever think about releasing a book or have you ever talked to Michael about it when he was still around? No, he, he wanted to keep everything a secret. Um, and I, I didn't agree with that because I felt that if the public knew the real Michael, <laughs> who he was behind closed doors, they would have loved him even more. Um, so I, I think he would be happy with the book now because um, he's been misrepresented so much with what's been going on in the press lately that finally people will be able to see who he really was. So I'm um, a couple of chapters into your book and I read the part about um, that you had to make a promise like not to tell anyone about what happened. Do you think he would be surprised or a little bit angry now that you actually did? I don't think he'd be angry um, because, as I said, his legacy to me is being tarnished by all of these stories that keep coming out. And it seems like it gets worse every year. Um, so I'm one of the few people who actually did know him and can shed some light on some misunderstandings that have been in the press for years about Michael. Um, and I think this book will, will really help in that area. Um, since we are a German fan club, of course, I have to ask this question. Do you plan to release your book in Germany as well? Oh, yes. I definitely am working on that now. Um, and I cannot wait to come to Germany to see you guys again. I hope we can hang out again. <laughs> I can't wait to see Germany. I've never been and I've heard it's just so beautiful there. What was it like to be with Michael? Like, um, did you watch movies or something like that? Like, a day in your life with Michael? It was incredible um, because Michael, as you guys I'm sure already know, was like a kid at heart. So being with Michael was like being with a kid all day. And, and you became a kid too. He had this magical way of making everyone around him have a child's heart. So we would play practical jokes on each other all day, um, watch movies, listen to music, um, dance. Uh, if you were at Neverland, oh, that was just an endless amount of fun. <laughs> because it was just like being at Disneyland, but everything was free. <laughs> and you had Michael being your tour guide. So it was wonderful. Um, yeah, with Michael, you, you laughed all the time. You never, you were never sad because he made sure that you were laughing. And I think that's what I remember most about him is just laughing all of the time. <laughs> so what was his favorite movie or did he actually ask you like, hey Shana, what's your favorite movie? Let's watch it. Um, I remember one time I was with him, we watched this movie called, um, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it was called Bakara or Bakara and it reminded me of the Earth Song video. It was like a movie that went all over the world um, showing different uh, parts of the world and uh, creation and nature. It was really beautiful. So that was the kind of stuff that he liked. He liked beautiful um, movies with nature and he also loved Disney movies. Anything Disney, Michael loved and he watched all the time. And of course, The Three Stooges. <laughs> he loved The Three Stooges and he, he always talked about it. <laughs> so yeah, I would say those are the main things. Disney, The Three Stooges, and beautiful nature type of things. <laughs> Did he give you a pet name? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> My name, um, at that time, a lot of people called me Shanana. <laughs> and he started calling me that. Um, so that, that was really it, Shanana. <laughs> so that's the reason why he used it in whatever happens? <laughs> that's what I heard. Um, I can't confirm or deny it, but that it was my nickname. <laughs> are, you, are you in contact with Michael's friends or family? 
Yes, um, there are some friends that I've kept in touch with, mostly the ones who are still loyal to him and who he held dear um, to his heart. There were a lot of snakes around him who, who weren't loyal. <laughs> so I, I always tried to stay away from that um, element. It's hard though, because a lot of people, they seem like they're nice and friendly and loyal, but then you find out they stabbed you in the back <laughs> or they stabbed Michael in the back. So it, it was difficult being in his world because there were a lot of people who, who weren't very nice. Do you visit Michael at Forest Lawn once in a while? No, I never go. That's just, I feel like he's not, he's not there, you know, he's in heaven. So to me, I don't feel that there's a need to go there and just be sad. Um, I feel him all around. I don't need to go to a cemetery to see him again. <laughs> When was the last time you spoke to Michael? Oh gosh, the first time we actually, I mean the last time we actually saw each other and spoke to each other in person was New Year's Eve. It was going into 2007 um, and we were in Las Vegas uh, at the David Copperfield show and he was with, uh, he brought his kids and it was great. We, the first thing he said was, remember how much fun we had on the set of Ghosts? <laughs> That was, I, I think that that was one of his favorite memories, the making of Ghosts, um, because it, we did it for about a month, and that was probably one of the longest uh, video short films that he had done in a really long time, and he loved it because we had so much fun, and that was always the first thing that he mentioned whenever we saw each other was Ghosts. So yeah, he and he remembered everything about it, stuff that I had forgotten. He was saying like, remember when we did this or we played this practical joke or remember this scene? So yeah, so that's what we talked about um, the last time I saw him. That was one of the things, um, but we were also at this magic show, so, and he was a big lover of magic. He knew all of David Copperfield's tricks. <laughs> he had been to the show before, um, and so he was asking me if he was going to do certain tricks or if he wasn't going, going to do certain tricks. So yeah, Michael was a huge lover of magic, um, and that was, that was what we did. And it was New Year's Eve, so it was really special. <laughs> and that was the last time you spoke to him? Yeah, pretty much. Um, he called me, or he had one of his assistants call me not long before he passed away, and I could hear him in the background, and he said, tell her that I love her and tell her I'll call her soon, and that day never came, so it, it's, it's really painful to think about that. So I prefer to think about New Year's Eve when it was, you know, when we were laughing. What is your current life like? What are your plans for the future? Well. For quite a while, I've been writing this book. I really had to focus on it, and it took a lot out of me. It was really emotional to go back and um, read my old diaries and, and go back into that life with Michael. A lot of the memories I had uh, sort of blocked out of my mind because even the sad ones, or even the happy ones, made me sad. Um, so yeah, it took, it took a lot a lot out of me to write the book. So that's really what I've been focusing on lately and now I'm meeting all of you guys and promoting it. So that's what I've been doing um, for probably the last year. And I'm also still in the entertainment industry. So yeah, I'll always do that. So that's where you want to focus in, in the future, entertainment business and doing all this? Definitely. That's, that's what I've always done. That was always my dream um, when I was a little girl to move to Hollywood and be in the entertainment industry. And here we are. <laughs> you know, you really have to go be your dreams. And, you know, no dream is too big. You, you can do whatever you want. And this book is really a testament to that. Um, I, I hope it inspires others to dream big and set goals and know that no dream is impossible. Do you have a message for the German fans? Oh, sure. I love Germany. I cannot wait to come see you guys and visit you guys, and hopefully you all will be my guides. Um, thank you for loving Michael. I know he loved coming there to on tour, and um, I hope to come too soon. So see you guys soon. <laughs>